Good afternoon. It's really nice to have you here with us. Uh, my name is Gloria Lili and I work in the Mashaf Karmel Training Center in Haifa in Israel. Uh, Mashaf is the Israeli Agency for International Development and Cooperation. And as part of a whole host of series of webinars that we're offering uh, for all our participants and for hopefully future participants, uh, we welcome you here today. Uh, our uh, lecture today is going to be presented by Neta Bissell. She's here uh, online waiting to speak to you. Uh, but I would like to uh, give you a few words about her background. Uh, she's an organizational consultant and she brings more than 15 years experience in human resources, organizational development and or organizational management. For the last three years, Neta has been working as an independent organizational consultant for global startups, both here and also abroad. She's also mentors uh, CEOs and managers on all stages. And she has a vast experience as a human resources strategist and also promoting business growth through management skills. Throughout her presentation, you have uh, the opportunity to chat with us and also to ask questions to Neta at the end of her presentation. So we do ask you please to, at the bottom of your screen, you will see when you touch with your mouse, you'll see the, the word chat and you can type in there any messages that you have for us or for Neta. So as I say, at the end, Neta will take some questions and you can write them in there for us. If anyone wants the, the link to this presentation, uh, this presentation is being recorded, so we will forward it uh, to anyone that is interested uh, to have it on record, okay? So uh, again, once more, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be very interesting and we're very, very grateful to have Neta here with us. So I'll, I'll pass the word to Neta now. Thank you so much. Good morning, Neta. Hi, so uh, hello to you all. I see we have for now, we have 46, uh, 46 participants. So hello to you all and thank you uh, everyone for joining us and thank you for, uh, in, for inviting me. Uh, we have here uh, many people from all over the world and I would like to, hold, uh, to start with a short fun survey uh, to get to know a bit better, to get to know each other a bit better. So if you will look at the chat of the Zoom, you will see a link uh, to the Ment Mentimeter. Please go, go to, this, uh, to this link and answer the question there. Where are you from, your country? And at this time, I will, uh, uh, while, while you are answering the question, uh, we will wait for a moment. Maybe we'll have more participants joining. I see that many people are joining as we speak. Um, so please go to the link. I will send it again for some reason. Uh, I will send it again to those who join right now. Please go to this link and answer the question at the link. I see people are starting to answer and shortly we will have, you will have your answers. Great. Okay. For jo those who are still joining and I see people that are still joining, Please do not answer your, do not answer where are you from at the chat. Go to the link that I put uh, at the chat uh, box. Go to the link and answer the question at the Mintimeter at the link. So we will be able to present it to everyone in a short while. Okay, and now I will do the, uh, the share screen.
and we can see we don't have all the answers yet, but we see that we have uh, many people here from Israel, India, the Philippines. Um, <laughs> Israel as well, China, Georgia, Kenya, Croatia. So great, we have a great representative here. I see that it's getting updated as we speak. Okay. And the second question, I see that it's going well for us. It's going well for us for the first question. So we will try another question for us to get to know you a bit better. And the second question would be, I will send you a new link, just a second. The second question would be, uh, what is your current job title in not more than two words? I'm sending you a new link for the second question via the chat of the Zoom. You can now go to this link and answer the second question. Okay, I see that for the second question, you are, you are faster. <laughs> okay, great, I see people are answering. Okay, now we'll do a share screen and we will see what we have. Okay, wow, surprisingly, I see that we have many HR managers, business consultant, uh, sales, supply chain, director of founders, very diverse, so we are, we are very diverse with the countries and also with the with your uh, professional background, which is great start, which is a great start for our uh, for our session. Okay. Okay. So uh, do you all see my uh, my screen, my presentation? Okay, great. So now we can start. Uh, and I will open with a, with a personal story. One year ago, I was uh, interviewing a candidate uh, for a position of an algorithm developer together with the CEO of one of the startup I was consulting to. We've met an impressive young man. And at one point, the CEO asked him, uh, so could you please tell us why do you think you're a good match for us? And the candidate answer, why do you think why do you think you're a good match for me at this point i had to pick my jaw off the floor out of shock but then i realized that something big is happening in our working environment although it all looks the same from the outside resume job boards placement agencies and social networks in fact the fact is that we no longer look for a job like we did a couple of years ago, sending out our resume, waiting for the phone to ring and pray. It doesn't work that way anymore. A recent study even showed that 85% of all positions are hidden and do not get published at all. The major change happening at the labor market is that we no longer have a chair waiting for us in an employer's office but rather a need of someone who's looking for a solution. The good news is that today we can find a job in a much more pleasant and creative way. So, are you ready to go? In this hectic time in which the COVID-19 brings many challenges on our doorstep, this is also an opportunity to take a breath ask ourselves, what do I want? And what can I learn about the world today in order to get it and better navigate my career? Our plan for the coming hour 
is to be introduced to the new world of work, to talk about your value proposal and learn self-branding and networking principles in order to spread your value and generate opportunities. Before we start, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Neta, I'm from Israel, uh, and I'm an organizational consultant uh, specializing in managers, mentoring, and organizational development. Uh, I work for more than 15 years and uh, 15 years uh, in uh, human resources management from global and international companies. Uh, I completed a master's degree in organizational sociology, started my career as, a, as an HR business partner in Intel, then continued to a position of VP HR in a global medical company, and then joined the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, in order to establish and manage an, the international center of the Technion. And after five years of managing this unit of 250 employees, I was offered to lead the hosting of the space studying program of the International Space University, which took place in Israel. For the last uh, three years or so, um, I took both my experience in HR management and, uh, and in, in HR and in management, and I work as an, uh, as an organizational co consultant for global and growing companies. I instruct, consult, and mentor managers and CEO in their role and help them build uh, great companies with satisfied and productive, uh, with productive employees. And I also, I'm also a lecturer at the business and management department for the International, uh, uh, for the interna international Space University. So now we can start. Career management is not something you do once you lost your job or wanting to switch jobs. It's a way of life. To maximize your profits, you should develop your professional and social networks all the time. Let's start with the facts. Typical job posting attracts about 250 resume. Out of uh, these candidates, four to six will be interviewed and only one will get a job offer. Recent study by a global recruitment expert showed that 85% of all positions are hidden and does not get published at all. So how can we enter the hidden job market? We'll start with understanding the major changes happening at the global workplace. In my professional field, everyone are constantly talking about the future of work. The future of work is characterized with the following aspects. I'm presenting you only the, the major few that I see uh, the, the a few years uh, that we are here. Uh, first is globally, it's globalization. Global companies today are looking to hire the best person to do the job with no geographical barriers. Second is roles, roles change due to technology transitions, automation, artificial intelligence, and big data are getting into core function of companies. Therefore, some jobs become less required and new ones arise. The new world of work is also characterized with a significant increase in hiring specialized contractors, consultants, and freelancers for positions that used to be occupied by full-time employees this is an impact on the industrial relations between the employers and the freelance employ employees and also has an effect, a major effect on their work-life balance. Successful organizations today are expected to present not just a financial profit, but to provide value to the community and its employees. And it's something that was uh, very clear for the coming, uh, for, the, for the last uh, two months, that the companies and the management uh, teams have noticed that they need to pay attention also to their relationships and to bring value and, uh, and empathy to the employees during this, uh, this uh, crisis that everyone are, uh, are experiencing for the last two months. And last, who's here under the age of 40? Well, I have, uh, I have good news for you. You are the Generation Y, the Millennials. Uh, you are already the majority of our labor market. And statistically, you bring an amazing characteristics. You want a job with fun, meaning, and money all in one. And it's possible. 
So how does all this affect our career? In marketing, we talk about push strategy versus pull strategy. At the push strategy, the supplier brings the product to the customer. For example, when you as a supplier send your resume to a company, or the opposite, when you as a customer get a message from a recruiter through LinkedIn. At the pull strategy, on the contrary, the supplier takes action so the customer will come by himself to buy the product. This is branding. So the question is, do you want to push or pull? Do you want to send your resume and wait? Or do you want companies to find you? If you establish a personal brand, you will be able to better spread your value and generate opportunities to promote yourself, to get to your dream job, to get a promotion, to raise capital, or to increase support to your ideas. So where do we start? Ask yourself, what do you want people to associate with you when they think of your name? Your challenge is to know what you have to offer and be able to verbalize it. So let's start with your value proposition. The first step is defining your value proposition. In, the, in defining your value proposition is to ask yourself, what is the value I bring to the table? Who needs it? Where is he located? And how do I make him know I exist? These questions are the, foundation, are the foundation of reaching your career goals. And I will repeat those questions. What, the, what is the value I bring to the table? Who needs it? Where is he located? And how can I make him know I exist? So after understanding and defining our value propo proposition, the second question is how can I spread, how can we spread our value, generate career opportunities and reveal the hidden job market? I'm about to present you uh, some proven strategies which are mostly relevant for the dynamic and global industries. I'm telling you in advance, not all strategies and tools are good for all of you. I assume that some of, for some of you, it will be quite strange and weird to think of themselves doing those things but you start with being exposed to those strategies and then you build your, uh, your capability to also uh, submit them. But uh, if you will decide to adopt one or two techniques that I will present, it'll most likely to promote your career. We'll start with the basic question, who's in your network? And the answer is basically, everyone you know or contact. It can be family, friends, co-workers, fellow students, professors, staff, neighbors, or any acquaintances. And when you're looking for a job, it is basically referring to any breathing creature. My first suggestion is to find a professional mentor. Mentoring is a classic strategy which becomes very popular these days among senior managers. I recommend to find someone you know who does what you would like to do and got a few extra years of experience comparing to you. This mentor can contribute from his experience and industry understanding and connect you with relevant people from his network. It is very important to be part of as many affiliation groups as you can. I'm not referring to Facebook groups, but a group of people you are familiar with and others are familiar with you. Associate yourself with respectful groups. Those groups generate interfaces and growth opportunity and their effect grows in, with time as its people are promoted in the industry. I can tell you, for example, when I uh, studied uh, my second degree in organizational sociology, we were all, uh, all, the, all the students were luckily with no, uh, with no experience at all. 
but today uh, many of them are uh, uh, VPHR companies, even CEOs at companies or, organi or leading organizational consultants, and we can help each other much, uh, much eff effectively uh, due to the fact that we keep in touch all those years. It can be your class from school, university, and even a WhatsApp group of parents from your kids' kindergarten can be quite effective. Being part of those groups enable, enables you to open your mind to new opportunities and getting access to quality backdoor jobs. I would like to tell you as an HR, as an HR manager that when I'm looking to hire someone, I, I would rather uh, tell the world to tell the notify people that I'm hiring for a position to a close uh, people that I'm counting on instead of publishing a, publishing a, a large scale a post and, uh, and getting uh, hundreds of, uh, of resume. Conferences and conventions are taking place all the time and all around the world. But at this point of time, uh, we move to virtual conferences, meetups, and live webinars like this one. So you can still choose those which are relevant to your ambitions. Check who's presenting and who's joining the event. See if it has any relevance to your career or your career ambitions and contact them. You can also proactively propose yourself to present a professional subject in a panel or a webinar or even lead and arrange this kind of event. Those actions are the best way to spread your, your professional value. Okay, now that's a mandatory skill at the new world of work. Spreading your value on professional and social networks is a new mandatory skill at the new world of work. So how do we do it? Try it start to try it is a very a minor step, but try to think of something that you do, something that you contributed in, and write about what you do, your contribution, your achievement, and how you got there. For example, you see a picture here of Yuval. Yuval is a computer vision engineer who decided to publish a documentation of what he's working on in an instructive videos on an open code website. This is how he effectively spread his professional, his professional value. And I can tell you from personal experience that when you're looking for a constructive video on his field of expertise, his name is the first to come up. You can do something like that or just write a short post, post every once in a while on LinkedIn or Facebook saying something smart which is relevant to your professional value. Volunteering is also a great way to show interest beyond yourself. Volunteering, first of all, it makes you look good. Expose yourself to significant activities and keeps you capable and relevant in the field you're contributing to. Moreover, think that in case you would like to get somewhere but you're lacking the relevant experience to get paid for it, the best option is to, is to find a volunteering role or assignments to gain some experience and connection in these specific fields. Now, here another, now here's an, another really important one. LinkedIn today is the ultimate networking tool and acts as your digital resume. Recognize that LinkedIn is a network of 400 million people and not just a database of them. Your activities on LinkedIn create a cumulative effect, and that's why it's important to make your profile relevant, even if you are not lo looking for a new job at this moment. Your LinkedIn profile is the best tool today for creating your professional brand. And the first thing, the first thing recruiters will know about you and contact you for. That's why you should write at, at your LinkedIn profile, not just what you did, but also where you're heading. And I will take an example to demonstrate. Let's take an example of a master's graduate 
who can choose whether a master graduate who can and choose to continue whether to continue for a PhD an academic career or to start working at the industry. According to her ambitions, she should elaborate on relevant aspects and minimize or even delete details which are less relevant to her ambitions. If I would like to stay at the academy, then I would emphasize my experience in, as being a TA at the university or my research experience or a public, publications of my articles. And on the contrary, if I want to, to enter the industry, then I would emphasize, even if it's a student position at the industry or some kind of an internship or a practicum, practical assignment that I did for, for companies. Moving forward, you should navigate your career in a proactive manner by answering the question, where do I want to work and act accordingly. To make an informed choice on your career, you also need to know what is going on around you. Today, candidates are expected to learn more about the industry and about the company they apply for. That's why, that way you can make an informed choice according to your ambitions and also present a better fit for the job you applied for. How many of you are familiar with the Glassdoor? For, the, for those of you who are not familiar with this website, a Glassdoor is a great tool to learn about the industry and about companies. It provides business and organizational data, information on different aspects of employee satisfaction, and even salary rates and questions from interviews for each, con for each company. So you should get to know uh, this. So I recommend you to get to know this, uh, this website. When we talk about, uh, about smart application, smart application means to create a list a list of organizations which matches your ambitions and your value proposition. Companies you would like to work for and are realistic for you to get accepted according to your experience. Submit a smart application means to find out whether you know someone in this company and try to forward your resume together with a recommendation through your inside connection and not necessary via the formal application channels. This is something uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not formally saying by an HR manager, but, uh, but it's something that really the most eff efficient and effective way uh, to get a job is to, is to apply via people who know you, who can, uh, who can recommend about you, and to uh, forward it to, to an inside uh, contact within the company you would like to work for. Also, studies showed that employees are much satisfied and productive after being hired via networking, meaning through mutual connections. Another thing I would suggest relate to smart application is for you to stop looking for a job and start finding a job. Stop, uh, stop looking for job ads and job titles and start finding a job. First, job titles are not always, does not always reflect the job description properly. Sometimes the same job title in different companies and industries require totally different work in reality. For example, marketing, marketing manager in one company can pro can practically do sales and in another company can manage a team of salesperson and work on the company's market, marketing strategy. So I suggest to open your mind and do not focus only on titles because you may miss some great opportunities. Ask yourself, what are the roles and responsibilities I would like to have on my next job? This is the first step in understanding that you are not looking for titles anymore. Have you heard about Me University? Up until a few years ago, we used to complete our formal academic studies and this has maintained our 30 years of career. Today, our formal academic studies are not enough 
and can maintain our value for about four to five years. At the new labor market, we must keep ourselves relevant at all time. And for that, we must keep our eyes open to new business and industry needs and keep accumulating new knowledge, skills, and ability while we are working. Our last subject for today's lecture is self-presentation and an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch can be one of the simplest yet most powerful tools. An elevator pitch means to be short, meant to be short, and as the name implies, delivered in the time it takes, uh, it takes to complete your average elevator ride. The length can vary, but you typically want to be able to present your elevator pitch in under one minute. What I'm about to do is to show you my favorite elevator pitch formula. There are many formulas, but I will present you the one that I like the most. We start with who you are. This is what you are, you are answering to yourself and present like a template for your elevator pitch. Who you are, what you do, explain the context, connect yourself to what the other person does, ask your request, and no matter what was the answer, you hold a pleasant close-up. So I will demonstrate. So let's say I'm in an elevator, it can happen anywhere, <laughs> but let's say I'm in an elevator and just notice that Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, is standing beside me. Oh my God, I cannot breathe. Elon Musk, <laughs> what should I do? What should I say? Let's focus, think fast. Hi, I'm Neta, so nice to meet you. I'm an organizational consultant specialized in management, mentoring, and HR. I bring more than 50 years of experience, 15 years of experience in HR and OD management in, glo in growing global companies, some of them at the space industry. I read and heard a lot about you and your company, and I'd love to hear about your managerial and organizational challenges to see how can I contribute to your company's success. Can I send you an email to schedule a short intro meeting? Now, he's of course answering positive in a positive uh, uh, manner. And even if he doesn't, I will say thank you so much. And if he does, I will send you an email tonight. Did you know it takes our brain seven seconds to decide who's that person standing in front of us. Is he charismatic, professional, reliable? After those seven seconds, it all goes through the first impression filter. In social uh, psychology, it's called the halo effect. I'm about to present you with the major keys for a positive first impression, which is of course relevant for any acquaintance or a job interview. Let's make something clear. Each person you meet is potentially the person who can open the door to your dream job. So when you meet someone new, think fast. What are you looking to gain out of this meeting? What impression you would like to leave after this meeting, even if it's a short and spontaneous one? Second is dress for success, meaning clean and aesthetic is the obvious. But it's deeper than that. You should dress like the person you would like to be. Third is high energy vibes. It's always work. It always works. As Steve Jobs says, people with, passion, people with passion can change the world for the better. And a bit about body language. It's important to present self-confidence and know your value. Make the other, when you speak with someone, make the other person feel he's the only one you would like to speak with right now. Direct eye contact, generate listening and credibility, but not too close though. Smile is something no one can ignore and it creates, 
and it creates an amazing contagious effect. Your body posture also says a lot about you, whether you would like to lead or be led. So, so beware to stand up straight, head high, broad shoulders, all the time. So at the last hour, at the last hour, you were introduced to the new world of work. We thought about your value proposal and learned self-branding and networking initial principles in order to spread your value and generate opportunities. I would like to, before we move to your questions, I would like to summarize the lecture with recommending you to make the effort now and use this, this opportunity in time in order to extend and deepen your network so that next time you will be looking for a job, everyone will know you, you know, will know you already, and all you will have to do is let some people know, publish some posts, and a large amount of people will already work for you to generate the most quality opportunities. And one word before we move to the question, remember that if you're searching for that one person that could change your life, just take a look in the mirror. So now we will move to your question. I will stop the sharing. Nuria. Thank you, Neta. Thank you so much for that interesting presentation. And it really is give, you've given us a lot to think about, that's for sure. And uh, um, I was uh, chatting with the participants earlier and I was asking them to write their, their questions here in our chat. Uh, one of the questions that came up um, is what happens to those that are outside the 40 uh, year mark, uh, you know, for the older, uh, older individuals that are looking to advance their career. Uh, uh, how to how to promote themselves is if you go any extra tips for those because it's harder the older you get to to find the employment okay so uh, first of all I have a, a different opinion on that that I will share with you I think that uh, uh, first of all I'm 40 and I don't think that uh, that it's getting older yet but uh, but even if we are referring to 50 uh, to 50 years old I can tell you that when I'm uh, consulting to companies that were looking to hire people we are very uh, we're very trying to to hire people that are uh, that are already having uh, an older kids that are more available and experienced and have a, a large scale experience a large bit perspective, a better perspective on the labor market and they are more available for work. So it's very important to get back to the point of understanding what is the value I bring to the table. And as you saw and on my presentation, there is no slide of uh, uh, what are the, the things that, uh, that are weak on my experience or the thing that can, uh, can uh, make me uh, go backwards. Focus on the good things that you have. And in every, in every characteristics that we may have, uh, we need to use the good things, believe in them, and present those aspects. And all the strategies that I showed using Facebook or LinkedIn, I think that even people on their 50s or their 60s, it's never too late to start using those tools. And it's never too late to try to be the person who says, I'm looking for a job and not be shy about it. I'm looking for a job and I know that I'm good. So can you help me? Great, great advice. Thank you so much for that. I've got another question for you. Uh, how will you judge body language? Okay, so uh, first of all, this part of the session, usually I do a face-to-face. -face. And then at this part, we demonstrate and I'm telling everyone to stand up and we demonstrate. So uh, this is a, I agree, this is a weak point of this presentation uh, today. What I suggest is uh, usually when I see a person 
uh, coming for an, in for an interview or any, any other uh, aspect, the first thing I think that I see is the way he stands. To stand straight and to put your uh, shoulders broad. To see that this person has a self-confidence and he believes in, in himself and he doesn't need to say anything, just the way he stands. And the second thing I notice is the smile. People who are looking at the eye and smiling, meaning that they are, first of all, it says that they are confident and second, it says that they are in, an, in a, not in a aware way, but it, they say that they are, they are confident and they are nice and they are happy and energetic. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. We have a lot of comments about the, the presentation. A lot of people are saying that this great presentation, they're really thanking you for the time that you've got here with us. Um, and I've got another one question here. Maybe she can, um, uh, if you could please tell us a little bit of how to better understand what's your personal value proposition. Okay. Usually, uh, when we talk about your value proposition, it's referring, the, the first thing is to think about uh, what are my uh, skills, what did I study, what, did I, what do I do? But I'm suggesting to think in a deeper way, meaning that uh, while I'm working, what are the things that I get good feedbacks about? Maybe you will get answers and you can, I, I even suggest to, to ask your coworkers or managers or former coworkers and managers and you will get, you will be surprised for the answers. You will get an answer maybe like a, you will a, reveal that you are an expert for a building presentation or you have a great sense of humor or you know how to, uh, how to be calm in a situation that are stressful. Uh, so I would like you to ask, to think, to see, a, to see your, to, to look at your life and your experiences and think about uh, what is your special value, what is your special ingredients that you bring to the table, not just with, the, with your experience, but also with your special, special characteristics. I would like to add one more thing. It is, when I'm talking about your value proposition, it does not refer only to professional uh, aspects because we are going through uh, things in our life, uh, things that may be complex and difficult, and those things build us. And uh, it's important to take those things in consideration. And it's not, and I even recommend to think how you can, uh, you can present them uh, and show how it presents uh, your abilities in those situations. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got another question for you here, for one of our participants. Uh, at the beginning, you shared a very nice story about this gentleman that was asking for the job and they wanted to know, did he get the job? Because he's thinking of that line for himself. Okay, this, uh, this uh, young man did not get the job. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and I think that, uh, that basically in this situation, it's important to, to draw the line from uh, understanding my value and understanding that when I come to an interview, it's not like I'm, I'm being examined, but also I'm examining the company and I do the preparation and the learning, but it, you need to draw the, a very uh, a, a light line to see where you're not an arrogant Yes, of course. I totally agree. Someone is asking or making a comment anyway. Can you actually be fooled by the body language that somebody presents during an interview? Is it possible they just they put an act and then later on they turn out to be they're not quite the person they pretended to be? Uh, of course. There are many people who can, uh, who can pretend but most of the time it doesn't last. People cannot uh, pretend for a long time. And uh, if I can recommend you to put attention mainly uh, to the first, to the first uh, seven uh, seconds and the initial part when you meet a new person and the initial sentence and the first uh, impression on our face, uh, this is the most important part and afterwards, this is the, the natural behavior of 
everyone is that after this set period of time, people uh, see your actions and behavior through this scanning of this uh, halo effect that we've decided on after those seven or 10 seconds. Yes, thank you very much for that. It's true, it's true. Okay, I just wanted to let everyone know again uh, that the session has been recorded and all of those that have written to us that they want the, the presentation, we can certainly uh, share with you the link and you can go back and hear Neta uh, present all over again if you like. So that will be posted in the YouTube channel of MCTC and also Mashav publishes the recording. Um, it, I don't know if anybody has any other questions, but in the meantime, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Neta. Uh, hold on, we've got one more question. Can it be possible when changing a field of work in many years to a new one with only knowledge and without practical experience in CV? Can it be given a similar value to current working position and how can it be judged by HR professional? Okay. First of all, it depends on the field of expertise. There are fields that it's easier to get into with no experience uh, because uh, there's a high need at the industry for those positions, which makes it easier. And other that it's uh, much more difficult. But I can tell you from my own experience uh, that uh, my career, for example, is quite diverse. And if you want something very much, then you will do the learning and the practicing. You will do a, a volunteering assignments in order to gain experience and not just the, the, the learning part of, uh, of the theoretical aspects. And, uh, and you need to have to gain connection and uh, create a professional network in this new field that you would like to get into. And uh, it can definitely, definitely succeed. Thank you, Neta. And someone is asking if they can stay in touch with you. Um, you can all, you can all uh, connect me via LinkedIn. Fantastic. In any case, uh, yes, I can send you the, the details to all of you uh, regarding, uh, regarding your, your uh, comments. And uh, there is one question here from Agustina Brown that she's asking, is nepotism the same as networking? Okay, that's a very profound question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think when uh, I, I have an answer, I will split my answer to two parts. Usually in, uh, in public organization, like governmental organization, that there are very formal, uh, formal hiring procedures and like committees, formal committees then um, all the guidelines are much more strict. Mm -hmm. So even if there are uh, people who apply and they are connected to some people in this, uh, in this uh, office, still everyone needs to go through the same procedure. Uh, on the other side, in private, in private companies, the main thing that's important is that we will bring someone who delivers. And that means that even if uh, the brother of the CEO uh, it will bring his, uh, his resume with a recommendation, if this person will not uh, demonstrate his capabilities, no one will take him. So I understand the, <laughs> the confusion maybe for people who are not, uh, who are not, uh, um, very experienced with all this networking thing um, but i recommend you to use your connections in if you believe in a, in a position that you are adequate to do then use your position in order to spread your value and see it as a service that you give to everyone by letting them know that you are good in something and you are looking and available for a job and if you are not good enough you will not get the job most likely Yes, thank you so much for that. I've got another question for you. Um, at the end of the job interview, the interviewer might ask you, any questions for us? What is the best question I can ask from? And then it says, from an HR perspective, what do you want to see 
from the questions interviewees ask? Okay, that's a great question. What I recommend is to first of all, come to any interview, come prepared. After learning about, about the company, go to their website, go to their LinkedIn, uh, check their, uh, their positions, check what they're doing, uh, to see how many people they have, where they're located. And uh, while you are looking at this information, you will have some more questions that you can prepare for this interview. Also, while you are being interviewed during the conversation, I'm sure that you have some questions in mind. So, so it's, a good, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to raise those questions that you have uh, at the end of the interview or during like, like holding it like a conversation. And if the interviewer, uh, the hiring manager is, uh, is talking about something and it's not totally clear, or if you have some idea, feel free. To, to ask and do it politely and in a nice way, but ask and it's, it's something that uh, provides a very positive impression for me as an interviewer to see that the person in front of me did his homework, uh, prepared for this interview and listened to what I say and have some questions. Fantastic, thank you very, very, very much. So we're going to close with that. Again, uh, we really thank you, Neta, for being here with us. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, you have many comments, uh, everybody clapping and saying, well done. They really enjoy uh, uh, this, this time with you today. And so we have as well. As uh, we, we say goodbye to everybody, we're going to save the chat. So anyone that is written in there, their email address, we'll gladly give them the, the link with the presentation. And uh, we hope uh, you'll stay in touch with MCTC and with Neta. All the best to everybody and thank you Neta again.